The torch relay for the Beijing 2022 Olympics is underway, and so is the U.S. propaganda war aims at derailing the 2022 Beijing Olympics. And uh, a couple of the initial shots over the bow, if you will, have already taken place in Greece. This is where the torch relay begins in Athens. This was part of, uh, you know, the historical backstory of the Olympics. And so let's just check out this AP article. Two arrested in Athens for protesting Beijing Olympics. And we see these flags here. One is the uh, flag of the U.S.-backed uh, riot in Hong Kong. Very violent riots exposed as backed by the U.S. government. And uh, the Free Tibet Movement, which has been backed by the U.S. for, for decades. The Dalai Lama uh, and his armed militias, these were created and backed by the U.S. government for years. And now he's kind of this, this uh, opposition leader in exile. And they have built this mythology and these, these stories and this uh, mystique all around him. But really, he's just a, a puppet of the CIA. That, that's what he is. I'm going to show you multiple documents from the U.S. State Department's official website explaining all of this, just in case you didn't know. Uh, so that's, that's what the AP article is showing us, telling us about, but is that what they're actually going to say in the body of the article? Of course not. They're just going to tell you two women attempted to hang a banner from the Acropolis in Athens Sunday morning in protest the upcoming Beijing Winter Olympics and were detained by Greek police. And so they're talking about an 18-year-old Tibetan student and a 22-year-old exiled Hong Kong activist, Joey Su. And they're both American citizens, no surprise there. Uh, they are members of the No Beijing 2022 campaign, uh, a statement from a New York-based organization, Students for a Free Tibet, said. Uh, who, a New York-based organization, Students for a Free Tibet. Is that all they are? Is that all they are? Is a New York-based organization? Or could they be funded by the U.S. government. Yes, that's that's right. They are funded by the U.S. government. There's Students for a Free Tibet Incorporated. This is the National Endowment for Democracy's website. The NED is the U.S. government funding arm for political interference all around the globe. And also, they are funding separatist groups because Free Tibet, Tibet is part of China. They want to free Tibet. This is a separatist organization. It says so on their website, and the, the links to all of this will be in the video description below so people can see for themselves. Now, let's get back to here. They never really get into who either one of these, uh, who any of these activists actually are. But who is Joey Su? Uh, I have seen some people pointing this out on social media. Uh, Carl Za actually posted a clip, a video clip, of Joey Su when asked about the horrible violence that the Hong Kong mobs were carrying out in 2019, when asked if she condemned it or not, this this was her answer. So uh, let's listen. We are saying that the police had been beating up protesters without a reason when the police so had So you're been... saying they retaliate? Yes. But they do more than retaliate, don't they? October 20th, we had a group of hardcore yes. protesters throwing petrol bombs mm. at a station police station. That wasn't retaliation. A week earlier, one protester stabbed a policeman with a mm. box cutter. We had a homemade bomb mm. which went off on the roadside, mm. which by the grace of God didn't hurt anybody or kill anybody. It's that kind of violence I'm talking about. Well, What's the justification? Well, I believe the justification is because when protesters realized that peaceful demonstrations and marches are no longer useful in calling the government to respond to its demands. I believe that's why, that is the reason why they're trying to use violence to express their anger, express their furious against the police force. And but this is random violence, what we're talking about, random violence. Yes, and I agree that in all means we should try to use peaceful means to call for the response for the government. And I believe the usage of violence would not be the resolution of forcing the government to respond to our demand. But the violence way. still goes on. Who, who can stop it? Who can order it to stop? Well, I believe 
nobody, nobody can try to stop it unless nobody. so it's out of control then if nobody can stop it chow hu tung remonstrated with your fellow activists he shouted at them love china i'm chinese but they beat him up unconscious had to go to hospital he was in critical condition when he arrived but he survived is that the way you deal with people who think differently from you well of course that that would not be the very ideal way i do you could you don't even condemn it we do not condemn any kinds of you have any no kinds principles of then if you're not going to we condemn do have principles in human treatment like this you can't even look me in the face and say I condemn this kind of inhuman treatment. We would not do any kinds of public condemns. So this is this is an act, a so-called activist that AP and others are going to tell us now is interested in human rights and upset with Beijing's human rights abuses. But you saw just right there her trying to justify politically motivated violence, which is the, the literal definition of terrorism. Uh, th the protesters she was defending were carrying out acts of violence to advance their political goal, not in self-defense, but to advance their, their political agenda. She said, no one is listening to us, so we have to resort to violence. That That is literally terrorism. And so someone who is actually out there defending human rights abuses is going to be depicted by the Western media as somehow protecting human rights and, and calling out Beijing for their human rights abuses. Now, uh, there is another group of activists. Uh, so this was another little episode. Activists unfurl Tibet flag at Beijing Olympics flame ceremony. They're gonna sit here and pretend that these, these are groups that are upset about the human rights situation in Tibet in, in China. What they're trying to do is depict these as independent activists who, who have some sort of legitimate concern about human rights in Tibet. They're not going to tell you who's funding these organizations and they're not going to tell you about what had been going on in Tibet when China finally settled the Tibetan question, I guess you could say. Uh, Tibet had been part of China and then the U.S. was trying to balkanize China, trying to carve it into pieces. And Tibet was one of the pieces they were trying to carve off and China stopped them. It's just like what they're doing in Xinjiang. They were backing these violent separatists. They, they still are. And I actually, I'm going to get into that in a minute because the Uyghurs are getting involved in this and, and will be dragged into this uh, anti-China propaganda campaign aimed at the 2022 Beijing Olympics, but they're not going to talk about any of that in these in these articles. So this one is actually AFP, but it's being uncritically reposted in Bangkok Post. So you, you have Thai English media spreading anti-China propaganda. And China and Thailand have a very close and a very important relationship. And this is all you see in the English language media here in Thailand. It's it's very sad. I'm I'm really the only person based in in Thailand. Uh, exposing any of this. If you come down here, at the very end of the article, there's something else very interesting here. Pro-Tibet activists, as well as representatives of China's Uyghur community and human rights experts are scheduled to hold a press conference in an Athens hotel on Tuesday. This is the press conference. Students for a free Tibet, funded by the US government. International Tibet Network. Let's see if we can find them on the on the list here. Inter International Tibet Network. There it is. Let's see who else is there. Uh, Tibetan Youth Association in Europe. World Uyghur Congress. We know they are funded by the U.S. government through the National Endowment for Democracy and Free Tibet. So at least three out of five are funded by the U.S. government. So do, do you see what's going on here? This is... This is a propaganda campaign. This has nothing to do with human rights. And some of the people involved in this, this propaganda campaign being waged against the 2022 Beijing Olympics, some of these people have actually defended human rights abuses and literal terrorism. Now, a lot of people find it hard to believe, even in the year 2021, they find it hard to believe that the Dalai Lama is somehow a CIA puppet and not some sort of enlightened spiritual figure because Hollywood and TV and the Western media have made him out to be some sort of spiritual leader for, for decades, literally decades. 
Uh, but when I show you who he really is and how the CIA admittedly was propping him up, arming his militants and, and waging war against China with him and his followers, and then it's case closed. That's what he really is. And they, they've built this image around him to make a U.S. sponsored militant and, and a militant organization, a separatist organization, a violent separatist or organization look palatable to the public, to the Western public. Let's go to the Office of the Historian. This is state.gov. This is U.S. State Department's official website. This is dated 1964, Review of Tibetan Operations. The CIA Tibetan activity consists of political action, propaganda, and paramilitary activity. The purpose of the program at this stage is to keep the political concept of an autonomous Tibet alive within Tibet and among foreign nations, principally India, and to build up capability for resistance against possible political developments inside communist China. And this was all part of the U.S.'s wider encircle and containment policy towards China, which they have also been pursuing for just as long, decades now. And so when you see this paramilitary activity, that means the CIA was giving them weapons. And in this memorandum and the others that I'm going to show you, they're going to talk about leadership programs, youth leadership programs. And when you look at all of these programs that the CIA was running back in the 50s and the 60s, and then you look at the National Endowment for Democracy's current program list for Tibet, you will notice that the NED just picked up exactly where the CIA left off. This is still a separatist movement being sponsored by the US government aimed at carving off territory from China in violation of the UN Charter. This is what is really going on versus what we're being told is going on. These are not human rights activists. These are separatists sponsored by f a foreign government, the US, to, to carve up China. So let's look at the next document. This is from 1968, uh, 342 Memorandum for the 303 Committee. So, uh, status report on Tibetan operations. The CIA Tibetan program, parts of which were initiated in 1956 with the cognizance of the committee is based on U.S. government commitments made to the Dalai Lama in 1951 and 1956. The program consists of political action, propaganda, paramilitary and intelligence operations. Here's some of the planned programs. The Dalai Lama began what is hoped will be a long range program of projecting himself and Tibetan affairs on an international basis. So this is this is what the U.S. is helping him do back then, back in the 60s. Uh, how about this? Some elements of the basic covert program remain to be implemented. They include the deployment of landline wiretap teams to selected priority targets within Tibet, the activation of special refugee debriefing teams, a census of some 70,000 Tibetan refugees spread throughout India and its neighboring countries, which may locate additional operational assets and the resupply of arms and ammunition to the Mustang force. So the, these were the militants the U.S. was arming and sending into China to kill Chinese people in, in an effort to carve off Chinese territory from, from China. That is what the U.S. was doing back then. That is what they're still trying to do today. The, the, the efforts in Tibet have been all but, but squashed. Same goes for Hong Kong and now Xinjiang. Uh, the separatist forces there look like they have been fully contained. And this is what we're seeing the, the remnants of the, the propaganda war buttressing these separatist movements, trying to cover them up and making the, the reaction by Beijing look like, you know, human rights abuses or even genocide. These are these are lies. This is war propaganda spread by the U.S. government. Now, there's another one. Uh, this is 1969 the 303 committee and they're talking about the Tibetan operations. So just 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 three documents, three documents talking about arming these militants, supporting the Dalai Lama politically, militarily and diplomatically. And when they're talking about the Dalai Lama, they mean this guy. That's who they're talking about. This guy who's always hanging out in, in the White House. And when when you see pictures of him on the US government funded fake NGOs promoting Tibetan separatism, they'll always have a picture of the Dalai Lama, you know, hanging out in front of the U.S. Capitol. It really couldn't be more obvious. So I, I told you, let's look at the NED website, Tibet, China 2020. 
and you're going to see all of these organizations that I was just talking about that are involved in this current ongoing propaganda campaign targeting the Beijing 2022 Olympics. You know, when they, they talk about uh, empowering a new generation of Tibetan leaders, and then you come back here, <laughs> they're talking about uh, finding a safe haven uh, of the Dalai Lama together with the nucleus of new young leaders, widespread sympathy for the Tibetan cause, et cetera, et cetera. That, that back in the 60s, 50s and 60s is exactly what the US NED is, is funding right now. So when people say that the NED is an extension of the CIA or inherited the CIA's regime change operations, they're not kidding. That is literally what the NED is. It is an extension of what the CIA used to do, regime change. And so I just thought I would point some of these things out. Of course, the whole issue with Tibet and US-sponsored separatism is a huge topic, but I just wanted to show you how the Western media is portraying these publicity stunts by these US-funded agitators, how they're portraying it and the, and the real story that's behind it and how the, the notion of Tibetan separatism being this organic thing and not just some uh, cynical ploy by the CIA to carve up China and to eliminate China as a near peer competitor of the United States. Uh, th this is all an illusion the Western media is creating. The, the truth of the matter is the US is behind all of this and this is just the beginning. And you see how they're trying to t tie the Tibetan separatists, the Uyghur separatists and the Hong Kong separatists. They're tying them all together and they're using them as a battering ram against China in regards to the 2022 Olympics. And we're going to see more stunts like this. It's going to get worse and worse. The next thing that's going to be coming up here pretty soon is in December, the so-called Uyghur Tribunal. That's when they're going to have their final ruling. And we, we already know that it's going to be completely politically motivated. And the Western media is going to uncritically report that as somehow evidence that China is somehow carrying out genocide, even though Western media organizations like AP have gone to Xinjiang and have not seen any evidence of, you know, this genocide that they're talking about. So they know that people aren't going to scratch under the surface. People that still read the Western media uncritically, they're going to read the headline and maybe the first paragraph. And that's all it's going to take to convince them that China is bad and that whatever the U.S. does to China is justified. I will keep an eye on it and I will tell you what's behind uh, these stories and what they're not telling you. And we'll just have to try to work together to spread this information out there and fight against this tidal wave of propaganda the U.S. is trying to use to wash China away, apparently. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. I have a website, newatlas.reports. I'm, I'm not on social media, so if you want to find and follow my work, newatlas.report is the place to go. All of my videos and articles are there. There is no paywall. There are no ads. There never will be, so please bookmark it and share it. Check the video description for all of these links and please go through them. Read these US State Department documents. They're very interesting. And they, they if you're not familiar with what the CIA was doing in relation to Tibet, you will be shocked how frank and open they are about how they were trying to carve that off of China uh, and how artificial the Dalai Lama is and how the US was behind building up his image. Uh, in the video description, there are also ways you can help support my work. And to everyone who has been, whether it's through Patreon month to month or one time donations, or even if you're just helping share my work, I could not do this without that help. So thank you. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>